Everybody, welcome back to Airsoftology Mondays, the show that answers your questions, helps you out in a pinch, and is also the main reason I clean up my desk behind me. It's true. It really is. Anyway, I'm your host, Jonathan Diggs. Welcome back to another weekly episode of the show. If it's your first time here or your 182nd time here, believe it or not, that's how many of these episodes I put up, if you can believe it, uh, I'll tell you how the show works. You actually, it's pretty simple. You put your questions down in the comment section below. You vote up those favorite ones, and I will do my best every single week to try to get them here on the show and answer it. And if not, please do what you guys and gals always do and answer them down below together. I love the community we built here together as a big happy family. Also, if it's your first time, smash that sub button. Uh, and if you really wanna get the updates, hit the notification. I do videos about two or three times a week. This week I'm still finishing up IWA show all kinds of cool stuff dropping, so it'll be a little heavier than normal. Um, also, real quick, before we jump on in, a couple quick things. I do have a web store where I sell patches, like these little corgis over here, the Shrugger Knot, my logos, and I have a question for you. Usually you're asking questions for me. How would you guys feel if I started a second channel that talked about travel? Nothing to do with airsoft, because I do travel quite a bit. I, if you guys don't know, I'm here in Taipei, Taiwan. It's where I live, it's my home. Um, I do travel back to the United States, and of course, I will be traveling all over Asia. Would you like to follow me in a more personal way outside of airsoft? Uh, I'm curious, let me know down there below too. Uh, I'm gonna be really paying close attention to your guys' questions and, and kind of doing some back and forth. If you think it'd be something cool, let me know if you think it's like, no, Jonathan, man, just stick with the uh, airsoft. Let me know too. So enough of that last question. Let's dive on into what you're really here for. And that is your questions in the Tipman mail call. Airsoft Nation writes, off the back of IWA, we saw the reveal of the 40 mic and it's causing a lot of controversy here in the UK. What are your thoughts to spammy? Will it cause conflicts in CQB as the trailer shows? So the 40 mic is a 40 millimeter grenade launcher created by Airsoft Innovations. They demoed it at IWA. And if you guys don't know, these little 40 millimeter shower shells, how they work, you put them in the grenade launcher, you pull the trigger, it's like a big shotgun. Boom, the blast, a whole bunch of BBs come out like a big swarm of bees coming at you. You get hit and you call it. But the problem is they don't have a lot of range. Now I've used some where you can put CO2 in the shell and use like a football, like a Nerf football and use them to take out vehicles. Um, you actually can launch an grenade smoke grenades out of it. The uh, the small ones, the wire pull ones, uh, they actually launch. If you take the label off, you can put them in there. If you use like the CO2 powered shells, I was getting like 150 feet. Uh, so, you know, 60 meters or so, give or take out of these things um, or less than that, 40 meters. Anyway, um, out of these things uh, with range, which was pretty darn cool in some games. But the way this one works is when you pull the trigger, it's like a two to three, I think it's like a half a second or maybe a second burst. And it literally, it's kind of just sprays a stream of BBs. I think it holds like a 90 or a hundred. I can't remember the exact number. I've got a breakdown on how this thing works coming up this week on one of my videos. And it's just like a BB hose. The thing is, you get this incredible range of over 100 feet where the shower shells, boom, they die out like after 40 feet, 30, 40 feet. These are like 120, 130 feet out. Um, it basically essentially gives you like full auto, like 80 rounds or 100 rounds a second or 200 rounds a second or something like that. It's nuts. So people are concerned in CQB that this might if fields have a rounds per second rule kind of affect that. I think in Millsim it's pretty cool um, the way this thing works, but that's your concern. I think uh, because of the one shot nature of it and you have to reset it and you have to go through it, these things are very expensive. Um, it's not something that's gonna be overused. Like let's say having a Polar Star or a Wolverine system or any HPA dialed up to like 60 rounds per second or a dual sector gear system running like 60 or 70 rounds a second where you're just hosing people down constantly. It's kind of a one shot deal. But up close, it could hit pretty hard, and these things come out at a higher FPS uh, than the shower shells. So they're coming out, but still well under any field limit. I think they're in like the 200s feet per second range. Um, so definitely below any pistol, below any rifle and all that. Um, I think you may see a few people slightly complain about it, but I think because of the one-shot nature of this, because 
it, it's a very unique product because you got to carry this huge, massive 40 millimeter grenade launcher on the bottom of your gun. I don't think it's going to be that big of a problem. That's just my thought on it. I think it's cool. I think it's the first innovation we've seen in 40 millimeter airsoft in a long time. And I really love what airsoft innovations does to push the envelope. But again, it's not about me. I want to hear what you guys think about it as well. Do you think in your field, if you play indoors as CQB, it could be a problem. If you play outdoors, I don't think it will be. You'll be able to hit those enemies at distance. But uh, let me know down below. Sorali writes, can I use nitrogen in my Tokyo Marui High Kappa with an HPA setup? So I've had a couple questions about nitrogen use in HPA tapped guns. If you guys don't know what an HPA tapped gun is, it's like this pistol right here, it takes green gas. Well, what you do is you take out the green gas valve, you put this little hose adapter in, you click it in to your regulator in a tank, and it's kind of like this HPA. It saves you guys money, a ton of money on green gas. It's consistent. Every single shot will give you the same power. And of course, you regulate it down so you're shooting that 300 or 330 feet per second uh, with the gun. You're, you're not overshooting shooting people, you're not turning it up. It just gives you a ton of consistency from first to last shot. Um, also, there's kind of a downside. You have to reload, so you have to take the mag out of the gun, you have to unclip the hose, you have to do the mag change, so it adds time on reload. So there's kind of a trade-off to the system, which I do love. I always love a trade-off, positive and a negative. So people have never really complained about HPA tap pistols. At least I've never heard anyone talk bad about it. But you're asking about nitrogen. Um, in fact, most fields I know, uh, a lot of fields I know, if they're not running an air compressor, they're still getting nitrogen tanks delivered. Um, I know, for example, SS Airsoft has been filling tanks before that. I think they may have a compressor now. Um, off nitrogen tanks. So absolutely you can. Nitrogen is actually a little more efficient, a little better for you and than using compressed air on cold environments. So absolutely go for it. Run the nitrogen. Again, as long as you regulate it down, you're not overpowering your pistol where it's going to break your pistol, and that's probably what's going to happen, you're totally fine. Or violate the rules of seek, uh, the FPS limits for the field, you're totally good. So yeah, rock and roll. Run the nitrogen. Go crazy with it. If you can get a tank filled with it, have fun, and yeah, you'll, it'll work fantastic. Global Fart SoCal Ants writes, what's your opinion on SEMA slash Tokyo Marui AEP style of gun? Great name, by the way. Um, so an AEP, if you guys don't know, and, and there's a lot of these little acronyms in Airsoft, AEP, Automatic Electric Pistol. It's basically a little miniaturized AEG, has a battery, it fits in a pistol. One of the most famous ones was the Tokyo Marui and eventually the CYMA or SEMA clone of it, the Glock 18C they, they made. Um, God, I even had one so many, many, many years ago, both the Marui and the SEMA version. Um, I think they're great. The power on them is very low. You're looking in the 200 feet per second range with a 0.20 gram BB, so very, very low power. Um, uh, so you're not looking at a very fast projectile flying out, but they are extremely consistent. They shot after shot after shot, consistently make it. So on cold winter days, if you live in a cold environment, having this is a great pistol to have where your green gas pistol and sometimes even CO2, you'll start to see some severe performance issues, especially with green gas. I mean, it won't even function. So having an AEP for wintertime and cold weather is really great. Um, also for room clearing, CQB, low power gun, very friendly uh, for the other player. You know, you still get the shots off. And the best part is a lot of them go to full auto. The Marui ones always did. They, they went to full auto. Even the pistols that weren't even supposed to be full auto, you could switch over. They also made a MP7 version in Tokyo Marui of AEP. Um, the only downside is it took very special parts inside. There are different gears, different motor, different battery, different everything, and upgrades were not that readily available. In fact, Lalax, the company, is the only company I know that really was well known for making upgrade parts for these under the Nine Ball. I think it was a Nine Ball brand. I think it was, um, to upgrade these AEPs. But yeah, I think it's fantastic. I'd love to see him come back. And now that Umarex has the license for the clock, maybe they can go and reach out to CYMA or maybe even Tokyo Marui and make this happen. I'll, I'll see if I can get some news on that for you. I'd love to get a licensed one and run one for real. Ed Jackson writes, could throwing a grenade around the corner be considered blind firing with the BBs also going in every direction? You know, it's one of those things I've never thought about. And I know there's some fields that don't allow grenades with BBs. I think probably for this very reason, it 
technically could be blind firing if you look at it that way. Honestly, I think it's a possibility that, yeah, that throwing a grenade around a corner and not knowing your opponents are there and have it spray BBs could be blind firing. Also, you could hit the opponent with the grenade. Now, I think that's probably over-exaggerating. I personally don't feel like it is. I think grenades are fantastic tools in airsoft and lets you overcome an obstacle that you normally could not do in airsoft. In the real world, yeah, you would do the same. Um, we can't use flashbangs like they would really use in the real world. I mean, a real flashbang will truly disorient your opponent. I mean, like, ring their bell really bad, ears ringing. Oh, it, it, it rocks your world. I've been hit by one before. They are no fun at all. I mean, they really, you feel it, you, it's, it'll knock you down. I mean, not knock you literally down, but really pull you out of the world for a little bit of time. But we don't have that in airsoft. We just have some bangs and all that and, and grenades. I think personally, it's not blind firing. It's a fantastic tool. These grenades are, are sending out BBs in a very low FPS. Everybody should be wearing full seal goggles. Um, that would be the challenge. If you weren't, the BBs could kind of climb up through the cracks or something like that. But I think that's the only concern. If you're running full seal, you're in a field, you're in a regulated airsoft field, you're playing this thing the right way, should be fine. But if you really look at the words blind fire, technically it could be. But again, like I said, I don't think so, but I want to know what you guys think. So is it blind fire, really? And this is also in the heels of last week's show. It's why we brought up a blind fire question. Um, I'm assuming this question came from that in the discussion we had about blind firing using something like corner shot. So uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about the whole grenade thing and if it is blind fire. And if so, just the bang grenades work just fine. All right, guys, that's it for questions this week, which means it is time for the Code Red Headsets video recommendation of the week. And this one is one that I have been debating and debating and debating on putting out. And, and I watched this channel, actually, OC Airsoft. And OC Airsoft wrote, wrote, one day the boys will get recommended. One day, praying hands. And I, I have had OC Airsoft videos queued up so many times. And there is some controversy around this. So I want to let you guys know, fair warning here, um, viewer beware, this sometimes, some people watch OC Airsoft and are polarized in one direction and some are polarized in the other. You may have strong opinions about both. I'm going to share this channel as one for you to watch and make your own decision on. I'm not going to encourage the mash the sub button. It's one I do watch because I watch a lot of airsoft. I watch even some of the crazy competitions you see in the Philippines where it's a style that I would never play. I wouldn't have the guts to play in the United States. But again, I grew up on no FPS limits and things like that. Um, so anyway, here's an OC airsoft video. It is uh, a mix of private games where you see the full auto and public games where you see semi-auto. What I do like about this, as aggressive it is, and you're seeing a dual sector build here, you're seeing an extremely high rate of fire. And I know what you guys are going to say when you watch this video. Jonathan, why are you recommending this video? This rate of fire is insane. Why are you doing this? And I think it's something everybody should see. What I do like, and I want you guys to focus on this in this video, is the fact of the bang rules being abided by, by semi-auto taps when it's up close. And during the other cut-ins where it's full auto, that is a full auto private game with other people running dual sector builds or like uh, HPA rigs with high rate of fire. They are all there knowing what they are going up against. There's no surprise here. There's no malice and overshooting like I've shown in some videos that were terrible as a bad example of airsoft. But I want to know what you guys think about this. And again, I'm throwing it out for your opinion. I want you to watch if you want to watch this and let me know what you think and decide. I personally do watch this channel. I think there's some good content. 20,000 subscribers can't be wrong. This is one of the bigger channels I've recommended. I usually try to start with the small ones, but I felt like I needed to share OC Airsoft. It's one that I, I do watch and do personally enjoy when you take it really truly for what it is. So anyway, let me know in the comment section below. Do you think I'm crazy for recommending this? Do you think um, it, it's fun and fair the way it's being played? Or do you think I'm just an idiot? Let me know down below. Oh, also, if you guys have a channel that, of your own, I do accept regular recommendations from your own channel. That's fine. Or a channel you love to watch, please put it down there in the comment section below. That's how I learn about all new channels and great things to share with you. Well, anyway, guys, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week. I've got some big things coming, but this week it's all about those IWA videos. Stay tuned. I've got a ton of reviews. I've got a box 
just showed up right off camera over here. It's huge, I've gotta go through it. I've got a pile of other reviews that are in some stage of editing. I have so much going on. You're gonna love it, the channel's gonna be insane over the next couple months. But anyway guys, until next week and later on this week with IWA videos, go out, play some airsoft, have some fun, but no matter what you do, call your freaking hits.